have you ever paused to ask yourself, what are those money habits that are pushing you forward or holding you back? Now, in the world today, we see millions of people across the world, they make genuine attempt to position themselves to build wealth. We see this when you try to attain personal wealth, and we see this when you attempt to create corporate wealth. But the very habits that you have can be the major determining factor in whether you attain wealth or you repel wealth. Well, today we're going to be looking at this subject. We will do a deep dive into money habits that are keeping you poor or pushing you forward. And I want to encourage you to get your pens, get your paper, because it's going to be a high level overview. But I promise you, it's going to be information that you need to know. So whether you're taking debt personally, personal debt can be you're buying debt for uh, a mortgage you want to get involved into, you want to own your own property, or you're buying debt for business. Uh, what I'm about to say, what we are about to get into here, uh, it's about to change your life. This type of information, you need it, it's long overdue. And just settle in. <laughs> We're going to walk you through this process. Uh, today with me in studio, I have, as usual, a number of dynamic personalities to support me in the conversation. I have Clement Frank, and Clement Frank, he is an economist by profession. He is a leader by certification and practice. And he's now in the process of releasing his new book. Along with Frank, I have uh, Peter. Peter is a mighty man in the world, but he's also the brain behind the Legacy Chronicle Human Growth Master Plan. What exactly does that mean? It means that his focus is on helping you to create a legacy, regardless of where you came from and regardless of where you are in life. His focus is to help you to create a legacy. And an essential part of helping you to create that legacy is for you to understand the importance of master planning. So he is an expert in this field and uh, I'm happy to have him here to talk to us today about some of what he does. But even more so, we're going to be looking at money habits that are keeping you poor. Welcome, um, friends. How are you guys? Fantastic. 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 Great. And awesome. Uh, today, we're going to be having a very dynamic conversation on this topic. But just before we get started, I want to run an ad very quickly. So. I also want to thank the listening and viewing audience from across the world. Today we have over fifth. Today we have we are reaching over fifty countries, and we would have attracted over twenty thousand new subscribers over the last two months. So I want to thank those twenty thousand plus, thirty thousand plus persons who have subscribed to um, two of the the channels that we are working with. Uh, I want to thank you. But what we've also seen is that uh, less than 70%, less than 30% of those persons who are viewing the programs would have subscribed to the program. So I want to encourage the remaining 70% who are viewing the program to press that subscription button. Why? Because you will be the first to get these content that we are bringing to you on a regular basis. So if you're a rising star in business and you need to understand more of how to move and shake in business to position yourself for greatness, this is a platform for you. But also, if you're the average person who is ambitious and want to achieve more in life, this also is a program for you. So I want to encourage you to like, subscribe, and share. With that being said, I'd now run a quick ad and then we'll come back and we go straight into today's conversation.
become an influencer, it gives you the edge that separates you from the competition. The GIP initiative, the Global Influencers Partners Program, is designed to expose you to over 5 billion potential consumers across the world. When you are a rising star in business and you need visibility, reach, impact, client conversion, and cash flow optimization, positioning yourself to become a global influencer may be the ideal tool that you need in your arsenal to win in business. I encourage you to join the GIP initiative and position your business to build confidence, trust, and credibility, and cash flow optimize the fastest. All right. Welcome back. All right. In starting the program, I want to do a couple of things. And I want to say this. Whether you're buying a personal debt or you're buying a corporate debt, there's a couple of things that you really want to focus on. And I want to emphasize this. You should not be in the business of buying debt, whether personal or corporate debt, unless you understand what I'm about to say. One, you should understand debt instruments. There are multiple of debt instruments. Once time permit, I will cover those instruments today. You should understand what is having a guarantee buyer. It's vital. The last thing you want to do is to buy a debt, assuming that this is how it's going to cash flow, but then you lose your guarantee buyer. That's a lost opportunity to cash flow, and that could be a recipe for disaster. You don't want that. These are things that you can see before it happened. These are things you can take practical and informed steps to ensure that you're able to mitigate it. We'll talk about all of that today. You also need to be certain that the guarantee income is above the debt cost. Now, when I'm talking about the guarantee income being above the debt cost, this can be viewed from different standpoints. Now, if you're taking a debt perhaps to buy a car, or a debt to buy a house, it may have different debt obligation as against if you're just buying a debt to buy some home furnishing. For example, if you're buying a debt for a home mortgage, you have to think about what we call the PITI. It's a principal and interest tax and insurance. And when you're buying, you want to ensure that your income is above the PITI. I will talk about that a little bit more as we go into today's program. Now, if these things, you don't understand them and you're attempting to buy debt, personal or corporate debt, you don't understand this. You're going to set yourself up to, to be hurt in more ways than one. And I know what I'm talking about because the research that we have done, it clearly shows that in the United States of America today, we have multiple of millions of persons that are buying debt and they just do not know how to manage that. So when you see we design these content and we are talking about these issues, we are doing so because we have researched it and we want to ensure that we are giving you a content of information that can really point you in the right direction. The last thing that I'm going to say here before I open up the floor, um, I will talk about the importance of you understanding the difference between good debt and bad debt. Now, the average person's taking a debt to buy your home, the assumption that you have is that the home is an asset. Now, the whole, once you're going to your primary source of income and you're paying down on that home, all right, from your personal source of income, it's a liability. Yes, the accountant may have their own view on this, but as time progresses, we will go deeper into this to really help you to understand why it is a liability and not an asset. So you need to understand if there's a better way to acquire your home. Instead of acquiring your home through the form of a liability, perhaps, is there a better strategy that you can use to acquire it in the form of an asset? So these are habits that you need to know. And when you don't know it, it is most likely going to be the habits that you are using that are going to keep you poor. 
Our vision here is to provide you with a content of information that will help you to elevate yourself and elevate yourself out of being poor. So the key here is to learn the right habits that will help you to attain that. So I've given you four concepts here today um, where you need to form good habits. My task here today is to examine this as we go into the next hour of discussing money habits that you need to learn, apply, and master to position yourself for greatness and to beat the poor mindset. So I'm gonna pause here for now. I'm gonna open up the floor um, for Frank and um, then Peter to chime in on the conversation. I know Peter has a plan to talk about the importance of value, which is an important habit, but we'll come to use us now, Peter. Frank, all to you. Frank, you're mute. Hey, good morning. Hear me now? I guess you Yeah, are. hearing you loud and clear, loud and clear. All right. Uh, one of the things that people often, uh, which is a fallacy basically, is that if you get a higher income, then that can make you rich. And, and, and uh, for some reason, the people with a high income does not are complaining that they don't have enough money. Mankind generally has a characteristic of greed. Um, generally, they, they want to have more. And as their standard of living increases, so does their spending habits. What I want to say is that your income level doesn't necessarily determine whether you're rich or poor. What causes you to be rich or poor, basically, is your money habits. Your money habits makes the difference. Even if you have a reasonable income, if you have certain bad money habits, it can trap you into a cycle of poverty. So despite having a reasonable income, Still many people struggle to build wealth and achieve financial stability. Certain habits and behaviors can prevent you from making um, the most of your earnings and definitely keep you broke. So you're just working paycheck to paycheck. We are here to basically help you in how to break that cycle of poverty and that bad habit that you may have uh, though you may have a decent salary. What you need to understand is that those habits are well destroying tendency. And that is the first step to change course and use your income as a tool that will build lasting prosperity. Now, if you repeat lousy money habit of wasting your income, it can undermine your ability to build wealth regardless of how much you earn. So with diligence, with discipline, one can break the money habits that keep you trapped on a hamster wheel to nowhere and make you make your money work for you rather than against you. And the path of financial freedom starts with awareness and a commitment to change. Uh, let us see some of the habits that um, people usually have. The first one is living beyond one's means. Living beyond your means. My grandmother used to say, you hang your hat where you hang can't reach. And this is likely the most common bad money habit that leads to financial instabil instability because you're spending more than you earn and that often facilitate, um, it's facilitated by easy access to credit cards which results in a dangerous cycle of accumulating debt. Even if you make a decent salary, if you're overspending on non-essential items, if you're keeping up with the browns, if you're buying now and paying later, that will ensure you live paycheck to paycheck. 
The first step is to start living below your means where you, you spend less. You spend less and you earn and save the difference. So it doesn't matter what your income is. If you spend it all, you will stay broke. A lot of people spend without a budget. And I used to be in this habit. And then you realize that you overspend and what you were supposed to get, which was more necessary, you didn't. So if you fail to budget, if you fail to track where your money is going, that's a huge mistake. So if you have no clear plan for income and expenses, your money will disappear with a little show for it. You need to make a detailed budget each month, which includes your debt, your bills, your groceries, your entertainment, and those um, emergencies that may pop up from time to time when sickness, accidents, whatever, incidents. So you know exactly where every dollar is allocated. Tracking expenses will reveal where you're wasting and it will show you where adjustments need to be made. So when you budget, it gives you control over your money. Another thing is you're not saving or investing. If you don't save, if you don't invest, uh, whatever portion of your income regularly, you'll miss out on the power of compounding interest and grow over time. So what you need to do is start by saving an emergency fund, and then 10 to 15% towards retirement and other financial goals. Pay yourself first by automating savings. Become an investor to share in the economy's growth because failing to save and invest means no wealth accumulation. The fourth one is making only minimum payments in debt. If you're paying on the minimum due on your credit cards, on your loans, and other debt, it will lead to paying more interest costs over time, and this will prolong your debt. So what you need to do is make a habit to always pay extra towards the principal, especially on high interest debt. Accelerating repayment is key to freeing up money to save and build wealth. Not having an emergency fund. Now, let's say Everything seems honky dory with you. Things going on all right. You're, you're, you're saving. But God forbid that you are in a position where you're involved in some incident. Something happens. And, and that's life. You, you always have a stumbling block that you'll have to face, those, those mountainous um, pressures, whether it be health, whether it be loss of job, whether it be loss of partner. All these things can, can put a stumbling block to what you have been saving. So without cash reserves for these unexpected e expenses, any surprise bill can mean falling into debt or financial ruin, which can lead to bankruptcy. So if you have an emergency fund with, with, with three to six months worth of living expenses, it will provide a cushion so you don't have to use credit or deplete retirement savings when the unplanned strikes. And it would be best if you had a focus on being frugal in order to be able to save an emergency fund. And, and please, frugal doesn't mean being cheap. Some of us have impulse buying. I used to have this problem. I, I just like the latest clothing. You, know, you see, I like to dress. And so it's easy to fall into the habit of impulse spending, especially with online shopping. These unplanned purchases, especially on non-essential items, can quickly derail your finances. You need to fight the urge to splurge spontaneously and instead delay gratification. You need to ask yourself if a purchase aligns with your budget and goals before hitting. Um, 
curb those impulse spending at least by 24 hours before purchasing discretionary items. Um, not regularly reviewing your finances. Uh, I have a habit in which I, I do my online banking and I always want to see what I've spent, what is remaining. And it's, it's a good habit. You need to, to, to periodically check and review your bank accounts, whether your credit card, uh, your statement, as well as your overall budget and spending patterns. Because it can lead to missed errors. It can lead to unrecognized fees and lack of awareness around where your money goes. So you have to make it a habit to examine your finances monthly. And of course, correct as needed. Being in tune or, or being tuned out leads to, to what we call missed opportunities. So regularly check up on those um, statements. Avoid financial education is, is a bad habit. If you're not taking the time to educate yourself about personal finance, if you're not taking the time to, to, to educate yourself about investing and will budget strategies, uh, it almost will guarantee poor financial decisions. So you need to read books, take courses, increase your knowledge base, increase your financial literacy, learn how to make your money work for you. And knowledge is key to making smart money moves. Being overly risk averse. While being too risk, um, too risk taking with money can certainly backfire. If you're being overly risk averse, it can also inhabit well building. So you have very low risk risk tolerance can mean missing out on growth opportunities in your investment portfolio and the power of compounding over decades. So you need to work with a financial advisor to find the right asset allocation for your risk appetite. Another thing that happens, we see online a lot is, is these get rich quick schemes. When it seems too good to be true, it usually is. Get rich, get rich quick schemes, dubious investment promises on realistic returns. And financial scams often capitalize on greed rather than prudent decision making. So you need to do your, your, your due diligence and don't chase dubious money making hype. There are no shortcuts to building wealth safely over the long term. It's very expensive to attempt to get rich quicker. The faster the action and greater the greed, the more expensive will the, the mistake will be. So you need to eliminate your own income with unnecessary spending, um, which would prevent you, you from saving and well building. Lacking financial plans like budgets and investment strategy will lead to haphazard money management. If you're making impulse buys rather than thoughtful purchase, that will erode your finances. If you're just paying minimum on, on debt increases, total interest paid and, pro, uh, and, and prolongs the peer timeline is what's going to happen. If you're neglecting to save and invest portions of income, it will forfeit your earning compound interest. You need to avoid, um, not avoid, you need to make sure you have, uh, you, 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 you spend time with financial literacy because that will help you to get control of your money's potential read a lot. If you have no cash reserves, it will make you vulnerable to unexpected expenses, which will force debt. If you're not monitoring spending and accounts <coughs> excuse me, regularly, it will result in ignorance about finances. If you're being too conservative or too risky with investment, it can impede or slow down your amassing wealth. And when you fall for get rich quick scheme, it will often lead to, to significant financial loss. So the path to lasting financial prosperity relies 
on diligently avoiding poor money habits like overspending uh, and their dependence while practically budgeting, saving, and investing your income wisely would, would help you to, to um, will ca cause you to become more wealth conscious and make, make sure that you amass wealth faster. Huh. Educating yourself, okay. hopefully, living below your means and letting your money work for you rather than against you. These are the mm -hmm. also put into practice. Over to you, Tagari. All right. Um, that was a large body of knowledge. Uh, I do believe there are a number of talking points that you will share, <laughs> all of which is important. And I, I trust there's not too much for the audience. But in any case, I do believe it's um, information that they need to know. What I want to say to the list in public, as you listen to us, we may cover a broad area on the subject matter. And this happens because we are excited to provide you with information, excited to provide you with a solution. But we are fully aware that on the platform itself, because of the time that we spend doing this, it's not adequate enough to expand on all of the areas. So I want to encourage you to be in contact with us uh, because we will be able to provide you with the mentorship, the coaching and the support mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, to help you to make better um, life decision and business decision and financial mm -hmm. management decision. Uh, but what you're getting here, it's, um, it's very broad. We will narrow it down. We would also have to do that specific diagnostic of where you are because we mm -hmm. are aware that every situation is different mm -hmm. so we'll have that diagnostic to see where you're at and then to help you to pivot um, from there uh, with that being said i want to turn attention now to um, peter um, who will talk to us about value how to value yourself as an essential habit money habit for you to have mm -hmm. uh, peter all to you yeah, Gary, thank you so much for the opportunity and I thank you for taking the time to design a platform like this. And I said it, you know, quite a few times already and I have to say, I, I would have to say it again because if I had one location, the information that I had originally when I started out about 10, 15 years ago on this journey that I'm on, I, ha I had to you know, go in so many different places. And it took to, to, took me a lot of time to piece, dovetail pieces of information uh, from so many various sources and then bring them together for them to make sense, uh, to, to lay the foundation for my moving forward. So I want to just encourage the listening audience that when you come here, Come with your pencil and your paper. Come with your, um, with a sense of teachability, um, uh, uh, willingness to be coached, because the information that you're getting here, if you should meet Frank somewhere along the road, and ask him uh, to give you some kind of a mentorship, or to to seek his. Um, uh, consultation, it would cost you a whole lot, would cost you a whole lot. And here he is giving you all this information for free. So do not take it at that. And that's, that in itself is a bad habit. Why people do not are locked into a loop that keeps them poor. People, a lot of times do not see value for what it is and we treat it we take good value for granted um they say the the the, um, the acronym for poor is passing over opportunity regularly when people make it a habit of passing over opportunities regularly they lock themselves into a habit a bad cycle of poverty but it can be broken and so this program is designed to help you or listening audience uh to break those cycles those bad habit cycles so thank uh frank you know what you said a while ago it was so much 
that I'm just listening to it and I realize, you know, what we do also where the human growth master planning is concerned, um, it's about human development. Um, business ought to be about human development, about human growth. But what we do find in the marketplace, as Gary and I were having this conversation before we came on air, is that um, when when businesses is designed to be manipulative or for the focus, yesterday we were talking, um, Shivani was talking about where do we place, is it the people first or do we place the product first? And when the product is placed as the focus, then everything is done to for the product to be sold, including manipulating people. And Gary and I were talking about how some products um, becomes addictive, addictive in the wrong way, because individuals are purchasing these products, being addictive to these products, not realizing that the product is bad for their health. And then later on down the road, they find out that they are in a crisis. So human development is the purpose for business. And in our, in our circle of human growth and development, there are three things, three concepts that we want um, our audience to understand or our clients to understand um, that everyone, everyone was born with a story to be told. Right, you're listening here. We're here. We're writing a story every day. Habits is you're writing a story every day. So you have to wonder if the habit that you are the story that you are writing is it is it in a loop that is depleting your value. And uh, the third, the second concept is that everyone was born with a character a character that you must mold that character so every day you arise you are you're working on yourself you're working on the development of who you are but where i want to focus on right now is everyone was born with a solution to be sold a solution a solution you were born with a solution to be sold um, and uh, the marketplace is the arena where solutions are valued and solutions are, are, are distributed. Now, when individuals do not understand the value of their solution, it may be a great solution. It might be, but if you do not know how to value that solution, then you are going to lock your great product or service that will is 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 designed to transform people's lives if you do not have a habit of understanding how to value that solution and realize that a value from solutions is usually equated with a value of self who you are as a person but focusing on the value of the solution, there's three of, uh, three concepts that you have to understand as you're entering into the marketplace. You have to understand that there is a cost for your product or your solution to be produced. You know, you, you, you have this idea that, you know, will impact other human lives, empower humans. But for you to really develop that product, there's a cost for that production from taking it from the raw material to the end res the end uh, product. Um, even if it is just a, an idea or in this in the in the modern world, um, digital, even if it's a digital product that you're passing through the internet, there is a amount of time and process. Um, that you have to go through to take that idea from just a thought and to really develop that idea that it makes sense for somebody else to consume it and it makes sense to them that they can add, add that value to their lives for them to be transformed. There is a process and you have to understand 
that there is a value, there's a cost for that production uh, process. When you understand that, when you understand the value that goes into that, um, there is also the cost for distribution. So when the product is complete, it is important now for it to be taken into the end, the, the, the consumer who are going to take your product. There's a distribution cost. And for you to be valuable or for you to retain your place in the market, there's a cost also for retention for you to keep individuals coming back to you for that value that you have. So there's a cost, there's habits that are involved in the production. There are habits that are involved in the distribution. And there are key habits that are involved in the retention. And all of that is locked into you understanding that there is a solution. You have a solution. So we're saying to you right now, as you're listen, listening to this broadcast, what I'd like you to take away is that, yes, even if you have nothing, you just came on here, you just happens to be slipping through the channels and you came on here, what we're saying to you is that you have a value to be sold and you must understand the habits that are involved with your habit to be impactful in your marketplace. And when you do understand that, you will be breaking out of the habits that are keeping you in a cycle of poverty. Thank you, Gary. All right, thanks for that share, um, Peter. And of course, what Peter emphasizes is that one of the habits that you want is to value who you are and to ensure that you're putting the right price tag on the value that you're bringing to the market on the value in yourself and even sometimes overvaluing yourself um, can be habits that can cost you to be poor. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, love that share, um, Peter. As promised, I will narrow my conversation to a particular line um, because I want you to have information here and the possibility exists that I may not be able to present the entire context today or now, but keep following this podcast because what I will do perhaps later today, I will do a comprehensive analysis and presentation on the area that I'm focusing on. So you have this body, this exclusive body of knowledge to help you to make, make better um, financial decisions. In starting this program, I did say do not buy debt unless you understand debt instruments, unless you understand what is guarantee buyers, unless you your guarantee income is more than the cost of the capital, and unless you understand the difference between good debt and bad debt. So let me give some perspective to debt instrument. We look at some definitions of debt, debt instruments. There are one debt instruments that many persons are somewhat familiar with. We call it bank loan. It's a debt. And there's a number of things that you need to understand about debt instruments when you're buying debt instruments, along with understanding what are those pre-qualification criteria. You need to understand, most importantly, the cost of capital. And one of the things that I see millions of people all across the world, you buy debt. And you never take the time to really understand the cost that you're paying for that debt over the life cycle of that debt. And believe me when I say this, the ability to assess the cost, the ability to manage the cost of capital can save you hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars on your debt portfolio. All right. In most cases, when you do an amortization schedule, uh, you see that you may be borrowing five hundred thousand dollars. Let's take that as a ballpoint figure. But the cost of capital over the life cycle of the capital, meaning the APR that you're paying on that capital, the principal balance, 
is higher than the actual principal balance that you're taking. Now, these are things that you can manage it. But if you don't know it, you can manage it. So debt instruments function and operate def different from credit instruments. You have credit, you have personal credit debt and you have business credit debt. Understanding the pre-qualification and the cost for capital, it is also something that you need to know. So I'm saying to you <clears throat> that in business and in your personal life, before you buy a debt, you owe it to yourself to take the time to understand what you're buying. And that's what you call yourself an educated consumer. If you're not ensuring that you have this type of education, perhaps you should not be in the debt purchasing business at all because you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to lose hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of dollars on the debt portfolio. Our role is to give you the information that can help you to make better decisions. And of course, I'm doing a high level overview here today. Now, Debt instruments operate different from credit instruments. There are certain pre-qualifications that you need to understand, and there are certain debt costs that you need to understand. But let me say something about a difference. You will never hear in debt instruments, you have a period of time of not paying APR. But in the credit financial space, you have a lot of this happening when you know exactly where to look. So perhaps you, the individual who's buying a personal debt or a corporate debt, perhaps the debt that you want to buy is a debt that has six months to 12 months, 0% APR. And what that is saying is that for this period of time, you have absolutely no interest rate to pay. Now, if you're able to access the capital, leverage the capital and pay it off within this window, guess what? You have access leverage and build some form of wealth with zero dollar down and also zero eight APR to pay. So there's a lot for you to understand here. There's a lot to unpack and I'm doing a high level overview here, but these are all habits, money habits that you need to know. And not knowing these money habits, it means that you're going to that negotiation table and uh, you are leaving the boardroom, not leaving the crumbs on the table, but you're leaving more than half of the cake on the table because no one ever taught you about these essential elements of money management that you need to know. So when we talk of being financial literate, um, it's a very deep subject matter. And as Frank was emphasizing early on, you need to ensure that you have a mentor, a coach, a sponsor, a supportive community that can really help you to unlock money matters. All right? Money matters. Um, there's hard money lending, and hard money lending operates different than debt and credit. It opens up opportunity for people that may not have a healthy FICO score. All right, that's part of the pre-qualification criteria. It opens up opportunity for you. But in many cases, you don't know this. And even in cases where you know it and you are able to leverage this, you complain that the cost of capital is high, not remembering that when you understand how to manage debt, it means that you have control over the cost that you're going to be paying for capital. So these are essential money habits that you need to learn, apply, and master. And when you learn, apply, and master these things, it puts you in a better position of strength to not position yourself to be poor because of bad money habits, but position yourself to win with money because you understand the financial ecosystem in which you're playing in. Next, you have what we call equity capital. Perhaps instead of you buying debt, instead of you taking credit or hard money lending, uh, you should be thinking about equity. But, you know, you don't know enough about equity to make an informed and educated decision about equity leverage. 
All right, equity operates as a financial instrument that operates different from all the other financial instruments that I would have talked about. And you need to know this. And let me give some brief example. In most cases, when you are leveraging equity financing, you may be talking to family and friends. You have an LLC, an S Corp or a C Corp, and you now want to raise some capital to grow and scale your ideas. So you turn to family and friends. And uh, this is called private and capital. All right, you are not listed as, a, as an as an IPO, but you can now access capital um, from family and friends, and perhaps you can issue them uh, a share in the operation for their investment into your, your business. Now, guess what this can do? Because the way equity fin financing is set up, there is that window that says that you pay dividends when the company generates an income. All right, so this creates an opportunity that relief you of that monthly debt obligation that you're going to be saddled with, with debt and with credit financing and with hard money lending. So taking the time to understand these financial instruments is vital in the ecosystem of wealth management, is vital in the ecosystem of mastering the right money habits that can position you for financial greatness. And just think a little bit about equity financing. Let's suppose that you're with family and they're not behind you like the financial institution to reach your monthly debt obligation, but they're saying to you, okay, we're in this together. And instead of paying us e equity quarterly or you know half yearly or at the end of the year, um, we believe in the brand and we want to put our dividends yield back into the business. What that does, instead of you you hemorrhaging capital month by month, you now have more capital available to you that you can now plow back into the business to help that business to grow. So in this equation, you need to understand money. You need to understand financial instruments. Uh, there's so much to for us to get into here, but of course, I'm giving you a high level overview and I'm just touching the surface in terms of what needs to be discussed based on the time allotted to us to examine these concepts. The last concept that I'm gonna look at here is what we call creative financing. Now with, with debt and credit and hard money lending, you have monthly debt obligation. So whether or not you are taking credit at 0% APR, uh, the reality still exists that you have to pay back on the principal on a monthly basis. Now, with equity and creative financing, it's different. But the more that you understand about financial instrument, you're better positioned to play the money-making game, the wealth-building uh, game, because you understand the ecosystem in which you're playing in. Uh, creative financing uh, really allows you in creative ways to position yourself to build wealth. And these are money habits that you need to, to, to learn, apply and master. Now, let me give an example of creative financing. Let us suppose that you have a desperate seller and you're the buyer, but you're the buyer, you don't have the 20% to buy the real estate, but you have a desperate seller. What uh, creative finance, creative financing strategy can you look at? You can now negotiate with the desperate seller to front the 20%, to front attorney fee, to front appraisal free fee, to front these different costs. And what happens because you are able to negotiate through creative financing, the seller assume your entire cost 
the bank allocates the capital to the seller for the purchase and you now have ownership of that estate, almost zero dollar down. But here now you have what you call an income producing asset because you're smart enough to know that you're not gonna live in it. You're gonna use this to cash flow and you're gonna ensure that it's gonna cash flow above the PITI, the principal and interest tax and insurance. You're gonna be certain of this. So this is just one example of how creative financing can work. There are multiple other strategies that I can discuss with you to show you how this can work. All right, you might be a consultant and instead of taking debt to implement your marketing campaign, <clears throat> you now reach out to your audience base, <clears throat> your subscribers, and you say, this is a unique program that we have. So you have 30,000, 100,000 subscribers that you have access with, and each one of them are paying perhaps $500 for your program and they're paying up front. That's a capital raise. Guess what? You have no interest to pay on that, all right? You know, you may have tax depending on how you look at it. But these are all creative approaches that you can use. And the point that I wanna get across, sometimes as rising stars with dreams and hopes and aspirations, you know, you are so focused on acquiring capital one traditional way, perhaps because this is all you know, but you're not exploring all of the other options, perhaps again, because you don't understand all of these options that are available to you that you can leverage to position yourself for financial greatness. The reason I'm gonna emphasize the importance of you knowing this is why it helps to reduce the cost of doing business, it helps to reduce your stress level because guess what? When you're in debt, <laughs> some people have sleepless nights, all right? When the business is not cash flowing how you, how you expect it to cash flow and you recognize that you're coming to a crossroad where you have monthly debt obligation and you can't reach it, what are those options that are available to you? So this is just some of what we do with our clients to really help them to see through what they're getting into one of the things that we talk about a lot is that in business you need to be proactive not reactive and being proactive means several things financially it means that you are thinking ahead you're seeing beyond problems and again you're able to take informed action to achieve a desired result financially. This should never be an experiment. If you're taking debt and you don't understand a financial instrument, you're experimenting. And it is the experimentation that can set you up for failure. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pause here for now. And I can see that we will not be able to get into every area. There are five headings and I already discussed one uh, not in depth and look at the time where we're having fun time do fly. Uh, but I just want to at least trust that this particular heading, you have a clear understanding of what I'm talking about here. I'm going to turn to Frank now to chime in. Uh, we're going to do one more round and then we're going to start to wrap up. It's almost an hour already. Frank, all to you, my friend. You're mute, Frank. I was saying I'm gonna be short this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Frank, no problem. <laughs> we can't control ourselves, right? Uh, it happens, you know, when you're passionate about your talking point, you know, you you just get all carried away, you know. It, you it just, happens, you, you know. Just want, it's just want, a serve. You just want to make sure that people understand how to amass their wealth and that the bad exactly. habits can have a like a profound and last in, lasting impact on your financial or your future financial well-being. Um, yeah. You see, from excessive spending and accumulating debt to collecting savings, and when you're failing to plan for the future, these habits can hinder your ability to achieve your financial goals. It can hinder your, 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 um, 
your, your ability to create financial stability. Um, I don't want to delve into the ways in which these habits can affect you. There, there are many, as you have the, the, the vicious cycle of debt being hindering financial stability, impeding long-term financial goals. You have missed opportunity for wealth creation. You know, and when you're in that position, there's a strained relationship with, with family members, with, with um, hobby, and there's emotional stress. You have limited flexibility and freedom, right? And it's hard to break free from that bad financial habits because what happens then, it requires commitment, self-discipline, and an willingness to change. And so what we need to do is to start by identifying the specific habits that are holding you back. And, and then you need to develop a plan to address them. But you need to, be, you need to create a, a realistic budget where you prioritize the debit payment, uh, those, those car savings and, and, and mortgages, and, and seek professional advice if you need. You need to surround yourself with, with a supportive network and educate yourself about personal finance. And whatever small victories you have along the way, celebrate them. You see, it, it, it has far-reaching consequences when you're in debt that can significantly impact your, your, your financial well-being. And so by recognizing the detrimental effects of these habits and taking proactive steps to break free from them, you can then pave the way for a more secure and a more prosperous future. And remember, it is never too late to change your financial habits and to set yourself on a path towards financial success and a brighter tomorrow. Over to you. Yeah, that was a solid point there, Frank. It's never too late, all right? And you can start now with the right uh, mentors and coach on your side. And there's always a way. And just let me give you a quick example of what I'm talking. What, what, you know, expand a little bit on what you said, Frank. I could recall talking to a young lady, and what she said is that for the last 15 years, she has been saving to accumulate monies to buy her first home. Um, at that time that she really started saving, I think she was about 35, but of course, remember she was saving for 15 years. So by the time she accumulated the capital um, to make the purchase, she was now 50. The challenges of being 50 uh, is that you have a, a challenge with the bank because the bank do look at the your work life cycle, uh, your income within, within the work cycle, life cycle, uh, before they allocate capital to you. Uh, it may vary from country to country uh, that looks at this, but there are some countries in the world that looks at this. So here is where she had the money, but then her age posed a challenge with her access to the capital. And she said, hey, it's, it's too late for me now. She almost gave up. I said, no, do you have a son or daughter? Do you have an uncle or aunt? Do you have family and friends that are younger than you that you can create a co-signer um, on, that, on that project? Um, and I help her to navigate the process because sometimes what you don't know, you don't know. What you don't know may hurt you. And sometimes you resign that I'm too old, but uh, being too old is never um, an acceptable form um, to be stuck in the problem zone. So I love what you said there. Great point. I'm going to turn now to Peter. And um, Peter, I'd love to hear your 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 thoughts on what we're discussing here today. Yeah, um, just you know, putting together you know some of the um, information that I grasped from both of you. Um, one of the things that I realize, even as we we get our the, the people that we work with in the human growth master plan process is that um, ignorance, ignorance is a habit. Ignorance is, and I, I listened to what Frank said, 
about um, association and getting individuals, um, uh, getting, putting themselves, finding mentorship or, you know, getting the knowledge that they need and the habit making, forming those habits. Ignorance, I realize, is a habit because um, it is not just that you don't know because we're, we're living in a world, I was telling my children recently that um, you don't need, you don't need me they don't ask me the question do not ask me a question there is something by the name of google and when you acquire that information by your own research by your own initiative it becomes more valuable than when somebody just tells it to you so one of the habits that you know needs to be broken is the habit of ignorance you, you you know get come here every morning if you need some more information set your clock come here every morning because the next thing that um i'd like to remind us is that um um the association is another bad habit that leads to poverty because you're the average an individual is the average of who they associate with all the time so i'm glad that i'm, I'm glad for this company <laughs> <laughs> Got you, my friend. I'm glad for this company, Frank. I'm here and I'm just listening to you. And um, you know, there's so much, you know, that as you teach, as you speak, both of you, gentlemen, as you, you know, you present information, gear it, you know, the debt instruments and credit instruments, and these are information that I've, you know, most adults, you know, people live and die. And they think that this, that this is just something that the banks talk about. I don't need to know that. You understand? But when you are in association, when you make a habit of being a part of a group of individuals that is challenging you to know, well, you know, if you if you don't go go if you hadn't gone done have gone to do your homework yesterday. When you come forward today, you're gonna you're gonna seem like you don't know much. It it pushes you to grow, it pushes you to research, it pushes you to, as I said earlier, everybody has a solution that that must be sold. The world, the marketplace has a need for solutions. So lastly, what I'm gonna say here is within your network, you know, the habit, you're building that that network. You want to ask a, a, a couple of questions and a couple of questions that you want to ask in developing that right network in, in building a habit of association is what is the spiritual value of your network? The people that you're associated with, what is the spiritual value? Bring everybody together and add it up and give a, uh, an, a you know, a, a total of what the worth is what is the spiritual value of that network what is the intellectual value of that network what is the financial value of that network and what is the social value of that network and it must be when you at the end when you add it all up it must be a place that as a human because in your human development, you need society. You need people to socialize with. You need people who are going to add to your mental and your intellect, intellectual development. And most certainly, we are spiritual beings. We need to be in an atmosphere where there is fellowship. And there's a sense of awe toward what you're doing. There, You understand that there's a greater uh, power than who you are in total. And then there has to be finances, because as I said earlier, that everything is associated with a cost. Just sitting here today for an hour cost, Frank, cost you something, Gary, cost us all collect collectively. And if it is not leading to some point down the road where there is gener generative uh, finances coming in, then we have to evaluate all the areas to see if it is making sense. And I must say that it does make sense uh, to be here to empower our listening audience. So we want you to do the same evaluation, the same analysis, because habits making constant, as Frank said earlier, you know, do your budgeting. And budgeting is not just to do with finances. Finan finances we're talking about today, 
but straight across the board. You have to budget on every area of your human development to ensure that at the end of the day, you are being productive. Great points, um, Peter. Uh, I'm going to give a brief analysis and then we're going to do some wrap up. But what I want to say here is that many persons, many people in the world, they shy away, they run away, they avoid um, growth pain. And what I've seen is that most people will give up uh, four months, six months, a year of learning habits that can transform their life because there is pain there. There's always pain in doing something new. But guess what? They will say, this is hard. This is too much of pain. But then they will swim in stress for the rest of their life because they choose not to grow through that growth pain. What I'm about to do right now is part of the problem, is part of the pain that you need to grow through, all right? I'm saying this because I know it. I've done the research. I've interfaced with so many persons. I know when, what I'm about to say here, many persons shy away and run away from. And I call it debt analytics. You're buying a debt what it's a personal or a corporate debt, but are you able to do the analytics? Do you think it's a good habit for you to have to be able to know this analytics for yourself? And let me give a vivid example of what I'm talking about. So you're buying a mortgage debt. The principal balance is $500,000. The annual percentage rate is 6%. The loan term is 30 years. When you do that analytics, what is the total cost for capital over the life cycle of that debt? Aha, uh -huh. many persons don't do this. You want to know this. The actual cost that we talked about, so the principal balance is 500000 The total cost, all right, for this debt is going to come up to $1,079,100. ninety. Five cents. Let me repeat that. One million seventy nine thousand one hundred and ninety dollars and ninety five cents. That's the total cost. The total cost that you're paying in interest cost is five hundred and seventy nine dollars one hundred and ninety five hundred and seventy nine thousand one hundred and ninety dollars. That's the total cost that you're paying in interest rate. Now, I know I made this sound simple, but you need to understand this. And let me break this down a little bit more because what is your monthly debt obligation on a principal balance of $500,000? The monthly debt obligation for this is $2,997.75. What is the interest that you're paying back on a monthly basis? You're paying back on the the interest is four thousand, sorry, four hundred and ninety-seven dollars and seventy-five cents. So when you weigh the how much you're paying back on a monthly basis, the majority of what you're paying is going towards the interest. All right, and a lower amount is going towards the principal. That of course takes place on a reducing balance scale. Again, I'm not here to tell you whether it's good or bad. That being good or bad, it depends on your ability to really understand financial intelligence. It depends on if this is a liability or an asset to you, because as again, I keep saying, regardless of the cost that you're paying for, for debt, when you understand how to make debt not a liability, but an asset, you make it work to your advantage, it makes sense. All right. So you need to understand all of this as you position yourself to buy debt because you become an educated consumer who is able to make smarter life and business decision to position yourself for greatness because you have the right habit. So the habits that I've just talked about here is doing that debt analytics. I know, yes, it may sound tough, but if you're going to buy debt and you don't understand this, 
you're at a major disadvantage. And our role is not to tell you things that are only easy. Sometimes we have to tell you the tough things in order for, to help you. All right. It's not about being soft on you. It's about telling you the real things, telling you the things that are hurting you, telling you the things where you need to form healthier habits to really position yourself um, for greatness. So I'm going to pause here for now. There's so much more, but I will do a comprehensive program perhaps later today on debt analytics. So to help the audience to understand so much more of what we are talking about. Now I'm going to come to Frank for his thoughts and closing remarks. You're mute, Frank. Now that we have established um, the financial and probably the legal impacts of not devising a financial plan, it is important to acknowledge that bad financial management can also take a toll on your mental health. And I'm serious. People facing money issues are more prone to develop high stress levels and mental health disorders. And the emotional consequence of financial distress must not or never be underestimated because it could give rise to a, a, a steep deep dip in motivation, inability to focus, sleep-related issues, anxiety, panic, or even depression. But if you're under such pressures, it's important to seek help and consult with therapists to help you deal with the situation better and then take care of your mental health. And these are the main consequences of poor money management that can be detrimental to your financial and mental health. And if you do not take charge of money matters, you're going to find yourself in deep hot water where your emotion and your mental health and your blood pressure and all those other health issues are concerned. And so to utilize your money in the best way possible, you need to start budgeting based on your priorities and then learn to make um, the right investments. And this is a great way to afford a boost in your finances. Thank you. Yeah, great point, um, Frank. Uh, one more thing I want to add very quickly. Um, taking into consideration the last analytics I gave, the debt analytics I just gave, I said that the total cost that you're paying for debt over the debt life cycle, which is the loan term, 30 years, you're paying back um, 500, uh, $579,190. That's a lot of money. All right, if you're paying this back in US dollars, it's a whole lot of money. But the point I want to make here, when you know what you're paying and when you know how to mitigate debt, you can reduce this by more than 50%. So guess what? You have approximately uh, 275,000 US dollars that you're saving. Think about what you can do with that when you're in a well-built mindset. You can flip that into multiple additional streams of income, not by new money, but by saving on the cost that you're paying for capital. <laughs> so there's so much for us to go into here. I just want to share that bit. Uh, get a financial advisor on your side. Get someone that really understands debt mitigation, money, how money works on your side that can really help you to navigate these things so you could make you know smarter decisions, you can have better habits. Uh, when it comes to money management and building wealth. Peter, all to you. Um, there is a there is um, a difference we want our audience to hear, to understand today, that there's a difference between um, linear development and cyclical development. Um, as you develop as a human, you know, it's, it's very important. There's a wholesomeness about us that we need to have, um, human growth development. And what I do find is that a lot of or the habits that individuals mm -hmm. have on a daily basis, it, it is not um, 
it doesn't cater to the total development of who they are. Sometimes people focus so much on one area of the development of their lives and then later down the road they're having a problem in another mm -hmm. area. For instance, a person can be so much focus on you know we need to develop we need to make you know income they need to make income and they did not go to the various um soccer match that the child had at school the play re recital that they should have been to the parent teachers meeting that they should have been to taking time out with the children as they're supposed to and now they have one area of success at the expense at another area of their lives so we try to help individuals to understand that there is two um, lines or two areas of development that they can as you're traveling through time right and this is where time is concerned the management of yourself as you travel through time um, there is linear development the shortest space between where you are to where you're going you want to that, that that trajectory that you want to go but then we also have to understand that life is not linear life doesn't come to us in a in a in a straight line life comes to us life happens in cycles so when you from where you from where you want to go to where you're you're going from where you are to where you're going, it is going to require cycles. And when you recognize the cycles, you can't uh, divide between the two because both, you have to work both. You have to work your linear development. You're moving from through as a straight line to where you're going. But in order for you to move from where you are to where you're going, it's not going to happen in that straight line. It's going to come in cycles. There's a habit, there are habits. And this is why we're talking about habits because habits is about what you do in a cyclical motion. Every, you get up every day, you brush your teeth. There's are certain things that you do every day. So what, we're, what we empower individuals to do is to understand how the cyclical or your cyclical habits connects to your linear movement your linear trajectory so you know where you're going the cycles must be taking you closer to where you are going and having that understanding will make so much of so much a difference when you look at your life life in total uh, thank you gary all right thanks for that share um peter I want to say to the public that today's program um, came to you with a kind compliment of one degree to success. If you look behind me, you're seeing one degree um, to success. And I want you to go to this website, um, bestsellerportal.org, that is shown on your screen. And I want to spend some time looking at this website. Um, the very first item that comes up is one degree to success. Take some time and study what we are doing. You also have a second program, which we call Business Success Blueprint. So if you want to be successful at this business and you want to know that blueprint, I encourage you to take this program. The beauty about this program is it's free. All right. So you can go to this channel, press on this um, image and get registered for this program. It's free. It's going to be free for a limited period. So you need to take action and take action now. Um, you will also learn about the GIP Initiative program. Now, GIP Initiative is where we talk about how we can help you become global influencers. And we only talk about things that we know, all right? We have been on the global influential so space, and we have been doing a lot of work on that platform, and now we want to share it with you. And so you too, if you have a business, uh, why stay local when you can go global and significantly increase your business potential to cash flow? So take some time, go to this uh, platform, bestsellerportal.org, and see all the different options that you have here. Um, 
So, uh, okay. So I was busy talking and I was scrolling and I didn't even recognize that the screen, I didn't share screen. So you have um, one degree to success. You have the uh, business success blueprint. You have the GIP initiative. A global influencers partners program you also have cash flow incubator now what cash flow incubator will do it will really really help you to understand how to you know position your business to cash flow optimize and this program is for business leaders and it's for the average person who's ambitious and want to learn new creative ways that they can position themselves to cash flow optimize Cash flowing strategies could be both active and passive. This program will really help you to unlock those principles. And um, you will also be introduced to the High Net Worth Investors Guide, a beautiful program. You don't want to miss it. You owe it to yourself to learn what it takes to start thinking like a high net worth investor. You owe it to yourself. I know Peter will come alongside with his personal life master plan and say, hey, you know, uh, you deserve it. This is the method. So with that being said, friends, again, I want to thank um, the list, our listening audience. We have persons listening to our programs from over 50 countries. I want to thank you from the depths of my heart for taking time out to listening to this platform and supporting the platform. Um, I want to thank even those who are looking and not haven't subscribed as yet. I want to encourage you to subscribe. We have uh, over 70% uh, percent of those who are viewing who have not yet subscribed. I want to encourage you to do subscribe to really help the channel to grow faster. And I promise you, uh, we have some great plans uh, coming up for you. Um, just stay true with us. And we have so much of great plans that we have in store um, for you as we grow and become bigger and bigger. I also want to thank my team and Frank. And always a ple pleasure having Frank on board. As, as Peter would have said, Frank would have been doing so many other things, but he decided to commit his morning to serving uh, people across the world to ensure that he's always bringing rich content and information to help people to make better life and business decision. Uh, Peter also, you know, he's also committed, you know, he, he might just get up, but he said, hey, I got a mission. I got a mission to touch lives and inform people and transform lives. And um, I'm going to come to do what I need to do to inspire. So he's committed to that process. And I think it's, it's easy for us to do this because as hum humanitarian, uh, we all have learned how to give service above self and how to give service to humanity. So I want to throw um, flowers at your you guys' feet uh, for being committed to this process of uplifting um, humanity. And with that being said, <laughs> I want to say have a great day and we do this again tomorrow. Okay, my friend. All right.